Joining us live now, Shadow Home Affairs Minister James Patterson. I'll get to that in a moment, James, but uh, just want to get your thoughts on these tanks, 49 of them being sent to Ukraine now. How do you feel about this this morning? Pete, this is unambiguously good news. It's exactly the right thing for Australia to do. We should be supporting Ukraine, and the best way we can do that is to give them equipment that we no longer need anymore because we're upgrading it ourselves, as is the case with the tanks. The tragedy, Pete, is that we didn't do this uh, in other instances like this. For example, the retirement of the Taipan helicopters, which instead of being provided to Ukraine, despite a request from Ukraine, instead were dismantled and buried in the ground, which is a total waste of a useful military capability that could have made a difference on the battlefield for Ukraine. Yeah, so the government's learned its lesson on that. I hope so. Uh, I hope this is the first of other con contributions that Australia can make that doesn't detract in any way from our own capability to defend ourselves because we're planning to retire this capability anyway and replace it, but which can make a difference to Ukraine. Yeah. It can be used against Russia's uh, aggressive invasion. All right. A few other uh, bits and pieces this morning, James. Labor MPs reportedly on the move again over negative gearing. This after the PM stumped up a few mil to buy a beach home that we all know about. Um, they're worried apparently about the Greens housing attacks. So I put that to Mr Miles this morning. He denied there are any changes in the works, but are you convinced by that? Well, that's exactly what they said when we asked them about the Stage 3 tax cuts, as you made the point to, in your interview with the Prime Minister uh, only about a week ago, Pete. Uh, I think this is a transparent attempt by Labor MPs to distract from what they themselves are calling the Prime Minister's Hawaii moment. I mean, the Prime Minister is a unique figure in the Australian political system in that he has not one but two taxpayer-funded homes they're pretty nice. In fact, one of them's got great waterside views, if that's what you're looking for. So really the only reason for the Prime Minister to be splashing out like this on a $4.3 million clifftop home is because he is contemplating his retirement and sooner rather than later. There's no other reason why you'd do that. So really I think the question has to be put to the Prime Minister today. If he was re-elected, as remote a prospect as that now looks like at this election, does he commit to serving a full term? Or does he plan to hand over to someone else during that term? And if so, who will it be? Will it be Jim Chalmers? Will it be Tony Burke? Will it be Chris Bowen? Will it be, will it be Tanya Privilesek? I think the Australian people mm. deserve to know what the Prime Minister's retirement plans are. As it turns out, Tanya Privilesek on the program next hour, James. Might have to ask her about that. Anyway, elsewhere this Good morning, a Labor, a Labor appointed member of the Council of the National Gallery of Australia has accused Israel of conducting a holocaust against the Palestinian people. So Tony Burke had said that this was supposed to be authentic leadership when he appointed him. What are your thoughts on that? Well, this is another example of Tony Burke putting his personal political interests ahead of the national interest. We've seen it in the Home Affairs portfolio, and now we're seeing it in the Arts portfolio as well. This person is not an appropriate person, in my view, to have been appointed to the National Gallery of Australia anyway, because he's previously been publicly quoted uh, attacking Australia and running down Australia and saying it's a terrible country. Well, I don't know why you'd want someone like that on the National Gallery, uh, an institution that should be about upholding and promoting what is great about mm. our country. So, But Tony Burke can uh, remedy this today. He can clean up this and he should sack that member of the National Gallery Council uh, so that we can move on with someone who actually uh, believes in these institutions and believes in our country. OK, and, and uh, as you just heard on our, our previous item, Tony Burke did move on Khaled Beydoun, though, kicked him out of the country. <laughs> Pete, I give zero credit to the Home Affairs Minister for this. It's not a big deal to cancel someone's visa after they have already left the country. Khaled Badoon should never have been granted a visa in the first place to come to Australia because he had posted on social media in support of Hassan Nasrallah, the slain Hezbollah terrorist leader. So you can trumpet this and brief this out and make it look like you're tough, but cancelling someone's visa after they've left the country has no effect at all. There's no evidence that Khaled Badoon was ever planning to come to Australia again. He shouldn't have been here in the first place. All right, James Patterson, we'll leave it there. Thank you, James.